Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that. And also, if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well, if there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly, it cannot be helped. And hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. I also have my fan on in the background. You might be able to hear that whirring too. Apologies if you can. This is yet another Eurovision 2023 related video here on my channel and today I'm just going to be going through some more information about the upcoming 67th edition of the competition. Now I did make a video very recently essentially called a what we know so far video but I feel as though I didn't actually go into much depth at all about the possible venues, the possible host city of next year's show. So that's what this video is going to be about. I have a list in front of me of cities across the United Kingdom that have said that they may bid to host the competition or there's been a statement that some politician has said. Anyway, I'm going to be going through all of those in just a moment. However, before that, and feel free to let me know your thoughts, of course, on anything Eurovision 2023 related in the comments below. Links, as always, in the description to, to my other social media pages. Check them out if you so wish. A short while ago, the EBU released another statement regarding the hosting of next year's contest. Now, if you haven't seen it, I'll be going through it for you just now. It is on the Eurovision.tv website anyway. And the reason this statement has come out, and I don't think the EBU really needed to do this, but quite a few individuals in Ukraine weren't happy that the EBU came out and said, it's not going to be in Ukraine now, there's a war going on, we can't guarantee the safety of the artists, the delegations, the press, the fans, all of that. So we are having chats with the BBC right now about hosting it somewhere in the UK next spring. And the Ukrainian broadcaster, and I believe the three Ukrainian winners so far, all piped up and said, we're not particularly chuffed about that decision. So I think, to try and just make it very clear that next year's contest won't be in Ukraine, the EBU have released a further statement. This is what it says. The EBU fully understands the disappointment that greeted the announcement that the 2023 Eurovision Song Contest cannot be staged in Ukraine, this year's winning country. The decision was guided by the EBU's responsibility to ensure the conditions are met to guarantee the safety and security of everyone working and participating in the event, the planning of which needs to begin immediately in the host country. That's so true. You can't really faff around for too long. You need to be on the ball with this, because as soon as you've won, you have sort of less than a year in order to get everything ready. And of course, the stage itself, the arena, needs to be ready in April, well before we see the shows on television, because you need to construct everything and get the press centre done and all of that business. With all due respect to Ukraine, and I think I covered this in my previous video, there's a war going on. There are more pressing issues at hand. And while hosting this wonderful, extraordinary extravaganza would be a fantastic thing to be staged in Kyiv once again, because it would be Kyiv, let's be honest. I'm not sure many people would feel completely comfortable going to a Eurovision in that city, knowing that on the other side of the country, things really aren't looking too great. Now, of course, next May, matters might be very different, and hopefully they will be very different, but right now, you've got to make that decision. And you've got to say, well, we just don't know what it will be like next spring. But we've got to make our minds up now. And that's what the EBU did. And I think they made absolutely the right choice. It is a great shame. It really is a great shame that next year's contest won't be in Ukraine. But everybody can surely understand the reasons as to why. And therefore it makes sense that somebody else steps in. And as the UK finished second, they've asked the BBC. Which is a fair enough decision in my eyes. Anyway, the article goes on to say at least 10,000 people are usually accredited to work on or at the Eurovision Song Contest, including crew, staff and journalists. A further 30,000 fans are expected to travel to the event from across the world. Their welfare is our prime concern. It is therefore critical that decisions made in relation to such a complex live television event 
are, excuse me, are made by broadcasting professionals and do not become politicised. Now, this is where I have to say that I think the EBU spouting this stuff regularly about the competition not being politicised, not having a political agenda, all of that business. As far as I'm concerned, politics does play a part in Eurovision. It sort of always has. Uh, and sometimes it's a small part, and sometimes it's very noticeable indeed. And I don't think that we can completely eradicate it, no matter what they try and do. Politics always has this connection to the competition, and it's a real shame that it does. And you knew, you knew, um, that if Ukraine won this year, which they did of course, that there would be a huge amount of talk about it being a political victory, uh, a win based on sympathy alone, all of that. You could see it coming a mile off. So all of this um, discussion about the host city, the host country for next year's competition, I've got to say I'm not the slightest bit surprised that it's happening. It's a shame, but there we are. The rules of the Eurovision Song Contest blah blah blah, that all participating broadcasters agree upon, clearly state that the event can be moved in a force majeure situation such as an ongoing war, which Ukraine is currently in, unfortunately. In response to the EBU's security questionnaire, a number of risks that would impact the immediate planning for such a large event, including the severe risk of air raids or attacks by aircraft or attacks by drones or missiles which can cause significant casualties were highlighted by the Ukrainian assessment provided to us. Additionally the EBU sought third-party expert security advice which clearly stated that the countermeasures proposed to mitigate the threats planning the event in Ukraine were insufficient for an international public event and the risk rating of a mass casualty event due to the ongoing conflict is high. So in other words, these people were saying to the EBU, forget it, it ain't happening. Alongside the security concerns, and look, it seems as though they really made a very good effort to see if the competition could be staged on Ukrainian soil next May, but alas, it ain't happening, as I just said. Alongside the security concerns, the continued conflict in Ukraine makes delegations and participants reluctant to travel to the country. This is the first time I'm reading this article, but I just mentioned that at the start of this video. Would people really want to travel? Would they feel safe? We also noted the comments made by the NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg that the war in Ukraine could take years. So, based on that statement, Ukraine, if they won again next year, they wouldn't be able to host it in 2024 either. And the EBU would straight away say that if indeed the situation in Ukraine is still very tense and very dangerous and a risk to life. And as I keep saying, it's a real, real shame. But you have to understand this decision. I think everybody can surely understand why uh, the EBU are now looking at staging the competition elsewhere. With regards to the possibility of hosting the contest in a border location close to a neighbouring country, I'm sure you're well aware that Poland piped up and said that they would take on the uh, mantle of hosting the competition. The specifications of suggested venues and the lack of the necessary surrounding infrastructure do not meet the requirements of the ESC. So maybe that's not referring to Poland, because Poland's got a ton of venues that could do it. Anyway, when drawing its conclusions, the EBU also took note that based on our current information, no major international concert tours are visiting Ukraine throughout 2023. I'm not sure how many international concert tours go to Ukraine anyway, but none are scheduled for next year. All this contributes to the EBU's overall assessment that in terms of security and operational guarantees, the necessary requirements for hosting, as set out in the rules of the contest, are not met. Taking all of this info uh, into account, the EBU, with regret, made its decision to move the event to another country and will continue discussions on finding a suitable location for next year's show. We are happy to engage further with our Ukrainian member UAPBC on all these issues. Now I've seen a lot of people online, and I haven't really been doing this, but I've seen a lot of people on Twitter in particular start saying, 
this person will host, this person will host, it will be this city, this will be the design, blah blah blah. To me that's getting a bit carried away, because the BBC, and I can tell you this because I'm here in the UK, and you know this anyway, they haven't even said they're going to do it. There's been no confirmation from our broadcaster that they are going to do it. Our Prime Minister, bumbling buffoon Boris Johnson, has said, I think uh, Ukraine should absolutely do it. The ESC, wonderful show, they can do it. He said it should be in Ukraine. Somebody else, a big politician whose name eludes me, has also said it should be in Ukraine. And I think the vice prime minister or something of Poland has said it should be in Ukraine. But this statement has made it very, very clear as far as I'm concerned. It ain't happening in Ukraine. Um, however, and I absolutely agree with everybody online who's been saying this, next year's contest should have a very Ukrainian slant to it. So you can expect a Ukrainian host, you can expect a Ukrainian themed interval act, opening act, all of that business. Ukraine should absolutely, in my opinion, be an automatic qualifier next year alongside uh, the UK, France, Germany, Spain and Italy. That should be a given. But there's still a lot of things to iron out. It's very complicated. And I'm sure the EBU are stressed out as much as we are. Just us humble Eurovision fans awaiting news, awaiting confirmation. Spain have pulled out. So if the BBC say they don't want to do it, I don't think the Spanish broadcaster are going to suddenly change their minds, but who knows. Which would mean the country finishing fourth this year, which was Sweden, They've said they would happily do it in Stockholm. So we wait and see. However, let's focus on the possibility, the likely possibility, that the UK are going to be staging the 67th edition of the ESC. Now I have some information in front of me here. Blah, 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 blah. Now I'm going to be clicking backwards and forwards, so bear with me. A whole bunch of cities across the UK have said we are interested. They've either been very vocal about this or they've just sort of hinted at the possibility that they will bid to host the competition. So let's go through this in alphabetical order. Aberdeen in Scotland is first. Aberdeen City Council. Now, when was this article posted? A while ago. So it might have already happened. But it says Aberdeen City Council will meet in just over a week to debate whether the city should bid to host Eurovision 2023 on June the 29th. Aha, that is upcoming. A motion will be debated by this council as to whether the city should bid to host ESC. Last week, six members of parliament and, s and members of the Scottish parliament signed a letter urging the chief executive of the BBC to consider Aberdeen, with councillors now set to debate whether to allocate funds to enable a bid to be launched. The motion has been proposed, I should say I'm reading this from Eurovoix.com who are on the ball with Eurovision News. The motion has been proposed by Conservative Group Leader Ryan Horton and is supported by the two co-leaders of the City Council, Alex Nicol of the SNP, that's the Scottish National Party, and Ian Ewell, or Ewell, sorry, of the Liberal Democrats. The purpose of the motion is to enable the Council to work with partners to create a bid to bring Eurovision to Aberdeen with the allocation of £30,000 to fund the bid. Um, now, whether this has changed or not, I don't know. Aberdeen is the second council in the UK to publicly announce it is taking steps to create a bid to host the competition following Liverpool. The city is home to the P&J Live Complex, which can accommodate up to 15,000 people. It's the fifth largest indoor arena in the UK. Aberdeen is the third largest city in Scotland, home to just under 200,000 people, and is known as the Granite City. There is also the Aberdeen International Airport. Now, a little bit more about this venue. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, where is it? Here we are. P&J Live was built in 2019. It opened in 2019. It is, I think, think a little bit out of the way of the city centre. It's in a suburb, um, but it's a very fancy looking place. It's hosted a whole bunch of concerts. Michael Bublé, um, Rod Stewart, um, Liam Gallagher, the 1975, The Script, Stereophonics, Brian Adams, and next year Justin Bieber and Elton John will be performing there. 
Um, it's also hosted the BBC Sports Personality of the Year event. Um, so yes, it could be Aberdeen. Scotland's hosted before, back in the early 70s in Edinburgh. I don't think it is going to be Aberdeen myself, but you just never know. Now, the next city that's listed here, bear with me, it's a bit slow, is Northern Ireland, Belfast, the capital city of Northern Ireland. Now, this is the SSE Arena, which opened in 1999, opened in 2000, my apologies. Um, it's right next to the waterfront, Clarendon Dock. Um, it has a capacity of just over 11,000. Ice hockey has been staged there. Blah, blah, blah. Loads of famous musicians, too. Now, what does it say about Belfast? Um, Belfast councillors Anthony Flynn and Seamus de Felter, and I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, have written to the chief executives of Belfast City Council and Visit Belfast, calling for their city to be among those being considered to host ESC next year. In their letter, the Green Party and SDLP councillors say that Belfast is already well equipped, blah, blah, blah. They write, ta -tur -tur -tur. We are right, I'm not going to do it in an Irish accent. I've already offended too many people. We are writing to you to urge that Belfast City Council and Visit Belfast play a full part in promoting Belfast as the UK destination for ESC 2023. Belfast is already well equipped to host an event like Eurovision with the appropriate venue capacity and accommodation available as well as transport links around the city and beyond. Then they talk about how ESC is a big deal and it would show off Belfast on the world stage. Belfast already has a successful history of hosting large global events such as the Giro d'Italia in 2014 and the MTV EMA Awards in 2011. We believe it is time for Belfast to take centre stage again in 2023 and we can get 12 points. Simon Hamilton, a former DUP economy minister, also spoke of Northern Ireland's excellent record of hosting such major events. Now Eurovision in Northern Ireland I think would be fantastic. I think it would be great for the country. I think it would be great for Belfast to show themselves off on a major international stage. But I don't think it's going to be Northern Ireland 2023 unfortunately. Moving on, Birmingham. Birmingham, which has done this contest before. Birmingham's Resorts World Arena has cleared its schedule, just like that, for May 2023. Following the news that the BBC is discussing potentially hosting the competition uh, next year, the City of Birmingham began its campaign to bring it to Birmingham. The City of Birmingham has two potential venues. The Utility Arena Birmingham has a capacity of just under 16,000 and hosted the 1998 contest. The Resorts World Arena has a capacity of 15,685. Many musical events have been hosted there, such as the BBC Music Awards and the ITV, that is the secondary broadcaster here in the UK, their charity concert for Ukraine, which saw Jamala perform 1944. The CEO of Birmingham and the NEC group, Paul Dandy, made the following statement. Birmingham and the NEC group would once again be honoured to host Eurovision. There's no better venue in the country to do this than the Resorts World Arena with, with our 40 year history of hosting world class live events. We have unrivalled transport links on site accommodation plus technical broadcast capability which has been known and used by major television broadcasters. We have all of the necessary facilities blah 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 blah. Beyond the venue owners members of the city council are behind the bid. Ian Ward a Birmingham City Councillor said that the city was ready to step up. To host such an iconic event would be a tremendous honour for our city, especially in light of such a difficult and challenging time for Ukraine. Our hearts go out to them, we'll support them any way we can. The concert for your Ukraine at the Resorts World Arena back in March really showed how music can unite us even in the most uncertain and troublesome of times. We're ready to step up to the occasion and make music fans proud. The Andy Street, the Mayor of the West Midlands, has said that he will contact the Director General of the BBC. Not only are we one of the most diverse regions, that's absolutely true by the way, across the whole of Europe, but we also have a proud history with this much-loved song contest, which has become a fixture of cultural life here and on the continent. Now Birmingham, as I said, hosted it in 1998. Should it go back there? Well, if the bid's good enough. But as far as I'm concerned, it's not going to be Birmingham either. Um, the Resorts World Arena, by the way, opened in 1980. 
Lady Gaga's performed there, Iron Maiden, Adele, Little Mix, loads of famous names, as you'd expect from a big venue. Uh, so next up, after Birmingham, whoops, I've just pressed the wrong button, what a plonker. Bear with me, we're getting there. Lots more cities to go. Let me know your thoughts. Really interested to know, particularly if you are from the UK. Next is Brighton, which hosted when Abba won in 74. Let's see what it says about Brighton, right on the south coast. Lovely place. The leader of Brighton's council has confirmed that Brighton will bid to host. Uh, now, uh, they don't really have a venue. It says here... Um, the leader of the council spoke to a newspaper. Of course, it was in Brighton and Hove that ABBA launched their global career. We'd love to see the event come back to the city and share some of our lucky stardust with the next global superstars. We will now approach the EBU and the BBC to formally express our interest. Uh, after all, as ABBA have said, the winner takes it all. Um, the largest indoor venue in Brighton has a capacity of just over 5,000 people, which is too small. So Brighton, as far as I'm concerned, out of the question. And Brighton's football ground doesn't have a roof, so not likely to happen. Now, what about Cardiff in Wales? Hmm, I think this could be in with a really good shot. It says here... The Welsh capital is showing an interest. Cities of blah, 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 blah. Politicians in Wales have called for the Welsh capital to bid to host the competition, with the likes of the leader of Cardiff Council and the leader of the Welsh Conservatives showing support. Now, the Principality Stadium, or the Millennium Stadium, is being pushed as a potential venue. It has a capacity of 70,000 people and it has a roof. Wales play rugby there. The Welsh football team have played there many a time. It opened in 1999. The FA Cup final was staged there when Wembley was being reconstructed. It's a whopping great big venue. It would be amazing. It would feel like a monumental concert. Is it going to be there? I highly doubt it, but you never know. Cardiff is the 11th largest city in the UK. Yeah, there's an airport. Of course there is. Uh, it doesn't really say much else, actually. But the, um, the other venue in Cardiff is the Motor Point Arena or the Cardiff International Arena, which has a capacity of somewhere in the region of 7,500, so it's a bit on the small side. But the 1975, Rihanna, Michael Bublé, uh, Little Mix, Dolly Parton, The Killers, they've all performed there. Snooker's been staged there, Darts has been staged there, Pool has been staged there. You name it, it's been in Cardiff. Is it going to be Wales 2023? I think it would be absolutely fantastic. And I think Cardiff is in with a pretty decent shot. However, I just don't know if the EBU are really going to plump for either venue in the capital city of Wales. So we move on. I will say um, my personal preference in a bit, by the way. Let's talk about Glasgow then, which is the favourite. Now, is it just the favourite because the exterior of the Hydro was in the Netflix Fire Saga movie? I wonder... Saying that, this venue has everything already in place to host Eurovision, quite frankly. It's a really swanky looking place. Scottish First Minister Nicola Sturgeon has given her support. Uh, she went to Twitter and said that discussions would commence with the BBC. Now bear in mind, Nicola Sturgeon and many other politicians in Scotland have said that there's going to be another referendum on whether Scotland should be part of the United Kingdom. So is this going to be their farewell party? We wait and see. Uh, Stuart MacDonald, another Member of Parliament, has supported a proposal that would see the Ovio Hydro on the River Clyde be used as the venue. The Hydro has a capacity of 14,500 standing audience, open to the public in 2013. The Council has yet to comment on a potential bid. It did host the Eurovision Dance Contest. This is Glasgow, uh, hosted the uh, Eurovision Dance Contest in 2008, but that was at the SEC Centre. And it mentions the Netflix movie. Glasgow is the largest city in Scotland and the fourth largest in the UK. It really does have a lot of amenities nearby that would be fantastic to host the show. Uh, let's see what it says. It's a sort of circular arena. Yeah, Rod Stewart opened it, uh, or he was the first person to perform there. Gymnastics has been there, netball has been there, 
Uh, Ultimate Fighting Championships has been there. Political debates have been there. It's one of the busiest music arenas in the world. It, according to this list, in 2018, it is the fourth busiest music venue in the world. That's quite extraordinary. Uh, but there we are. Glasgow is the favourite. What a surprise, ladies and gentlemen, that the favourite to host 2023 is the location furthest away from where I live. Love it. Got to love it. But hey-ho, let's go. Uh, next up on the list, ladies and gentlemen, bear with me. Mm. It's Leeds. It ain't happening in Leeds, I can tell you that. It's the first direct arena, ladies and gentlemen. Opened in 2013, capacity of just under 14,000. It's got quite a fancy-looking facade. Um, yeah, loads of events have been there. You name it. Kings of Leon, Drake, Green Day, who I'm seeing tomorrow in London. Uh, Mumford & Sons. Uh, Liam Gallagher, Dua Lipa, Blondie, Diana Ross, loads of comedians. I'm looking at a picture here, and I've seen other pictures too. I think the interior and the seating arrangement isn't the best for Eurovision, actually. Which makes me think that Leeds are going to win the bid. The councillor, James Lewis, leader of the Leeds City Council, and Jonathan Pryor, an executive member for the Economy and Culture, released a statement. It goes without saying that Leeds will be bidding to host. We already have been in touch with the government and the BBC to discuss our plans. Leeds has already proved that it has the capability and capacity to host major international events. Um... Given that we will be midway through the Leeds 2023 year of culture, it could not come at a better time. Um, and it says how West Yorkshire, Leeds is up north, is home to a large number of Ukrainians. Uh, Leeds has a population of about 1.7 million people, known for its role in the Industrial Revolution, and is connected to the rest of Europe via Leeds Bradford International Airport. Yeah, that's all wonderful. I don't think it's going to be Leeds, ladies and gentlemen. Um... So, the next one on the list is Liverpool. And Liverpool, of course, has a rich musical history with the Beatles, of course. Um, there it is. It's uh, next to a river again. It's the M&S Arena. Uh, Liverpool was one of the first cities in the UK to express its interest. The announcement from the City Council uh, came after the EBU originally said Ukraine would not host in 2023. Um... It is a UNESCO city of music in England. The city has started to draw up plans for potential venues. The city is known globally as the birthplace of the Beatles and many other events. The airport is named after John Lennon, if you didn't know, and the population is just under 500,000. The mayor of Liverpool, Joanne Anderson, said, We are an event city and no one can stage a party like us. Culture is synonymous with Liverpool and we tick all the boxes to be next year's host. Great venues, enviable experience, a world-renowned music heritage, UNESCO City of Music status and of course the warm Scouse welcome that just can't be beaten. The event would become a beacon of hope around the world. Blah, blah, blah. Now Liverpool's M&S Bank Arena has a capacity of uh, 11,000, it opened in 2008, it's quite a modern place, um, yeah, Liverpool's a, a wonderful city, uh, known for its music and its football, but I don't think it's going to be Liverpool 2023, so could it be London 2023, London's hosted many times before, now the BBC, if you didn't know, are really trying to move events away from the capital city, so I'm not sure London's going to do it, but if they want a safe pair of hands, it will be London. Uh, the tweet from Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London, um, says, Londoners would welcome Eurovision with open arms. We're ready to step up and support Ukraine by hosting a contest that pays tribute to and honours the Ukrainian people and also celebrates the very best of Britain too. Nine million people, 300 languages are spoken there. There's a whole bunch of venues in contention. Now, I've said for a long time that if London ever hosted, it would be the Wembley Arena, which has a capacity of 12,500. It opened in 2006. That's when it reopened. It originally opened in 1934. It's a historic place. Every famous musician you can think of has performed there. Every sport you can think of has been staged there as well. Great transport links. You've also got the O2, a place I've been to. 
also known as the Millennium Dome, even though it hasn't been the Millennium Dome for an absolute eternity. Capacity of 20,000, one of the biggest venues in Western Europe. Um, it hosted events at the 2012 Olympics. It's one of the busiest arenas in the world. It's hosted tennis and loads of musicians have performed there. Of course, Michael Jackson was going to perform there before, but he passed away before he was able to do so. So yes, that's London. Don't think it's going to be London. The momentum at this moment in time is elsewhere. So could it be Manchester? Now, if you ask me, it's going to be Glasgow or Manchester. I think it could be Manchester. A, because the music scene is really great and always has been. B, because Manchester's never done it. C, because uh, in a way it would be a sort of bounce-back moment for Manchester. A few years ago there was the uh, terrorist incident at the Ariana Grande concert. Now I know that was a few years ago, but this would be really cementing Manchester as being back as a real hive of music and culture, as far as I'm concerned. And also, it's got great transport links. And uh, the BBC, uh, one of their big headquarters is in Salford, which is right next door. So all signs to me point to Glasgow or Manchester. Now, it says here, local politicians in Manchester have expressed their support. Leader of the Manchester City Council, Bev Craig, has taken to social media to show her support, while somebody else has also expressed their support. Uh, home to just under 550,000 people, 2.8 million in Greater Manchester, one of the most important cities in the UK, an economic as well as a cultural hub for the northwest of England. The Commonwealth Games have been there, two major football clubs, big airport, and was going to host Junior Eurovision in 2004. Now, the arena is called the AO Arena. It is the biggest indoor venue in the UK and the second largest in Europe, with a capacity of 21,000. However, Manchester is currently building an even bigger venue right next to Manchester City's football ground, which is going to have a capacity of about 23,500, I think. That might not be open in time for next May, but if it was open in time for next May, it could be the first major event stage there. So, again, I'm thinking ahead here. Manchester really could get the bid. It's a big, vast arena, incredible atmosphere, loads of events, loads of sports, you name it, it's been there. And if it's going to be in England, I think it will be Manchester. So there we go. Me and a friend have already discussed... Um, potentially going to Manchester next May, if indeed Manchester wins the bid. Uh, a few more to go. Sheffield is next. Mm. Sheffield. Local councillors, including Ben Miskell, have stated that they would be ready to host the contest in the South Yorkshire city. Um, there's a tweet you can look at online. The Sheffield Arena has a capacity of just under 14,000 has been used for concerts and sporting events. There's an airport nearby. This northern city is home to the friendliest people on earth, says Councillor Ben Miskell. The city's population is just over 550,000. The Sheffield Arena opened in 1991. There it is. Maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing from the outside, but it's hosted all manner of events and sporting related activities too. I don't think it's going to be Sheffield, but you just never know. Um, you might know Sheffield better for staging the World Snooker Championships every year at the Crucible. Uh, two more cities to go. Sunderland is next. Sunderland is right up in the northeast on the coast. Uh, it says here, Councillor Dominic McDonough has called on the City Council of Sunderland to bid. Um, he said Sunderland has the facilities to host with the Stadium of Light, that is Sunderland's football ground, it's massive, about 40,000, but no roof, uh, being a perfect venue, um, home to just under 175,000 people. Um, the Stadium of Light can have a capacity of 60,000 in a concert setting, but as it says here, there is no roof. So as far as I'm concerned, Sunderland's out of the running. That leaves Wolverhampton, which is right next door to Birmingham. 
it is essentially part of Birmingham. Let's see what it says here, because Wolverhampton doesn't have a venue either. Let's see what it says. Here we go. The former mayor of Wolverhampton and current councillor Claire Dark has called for the city to bid. She told the newspaper in Wolverhampton, I will be calling Wolverhampton's finest musical talent to join together to support this cause with a one-off concert with all proceeds to support refugees in Ukraine. I will personally invite Liam Payne to join and encourage him to reunite with One Direction for a one-off show. Wolverhampton is a diverse, multicultural and inclusive city. Blah, blah, blah. Um, there is the football stadium, Molyneux, no roof. And there's also a few other venues, but they're too small as far as I'm aware. Population of 250,000, uh, a short distance from Birmingham, and will be one of the locations to hold events as part of this year's upcoming Commonwealth Games in Birmingham. So there we go. A really long, rambling video from me once again. I really do apologise. If you've stuck with me this far, I really do appreciate it. That's it. That's what we know so far. All of those cities have said something about potentially bidding, or we will definitely bid, to stage Eurovision next year. And there's, of course, that statement out there now by the European Broadcasting Union making it very clear, and I don't think they're going to change their minds now, that next year's contest will not be on Ukrainian soil. Let me know your thoughts about this. I'm really, really interested to know. I would prefer it to be as close to where I live as possible, which means London or Birmingham. However, as I said earlier, I think if it is in England, it will be Manchester. And I think if it's in Scotland, it's definitely going to be Glasgow. It's going to be one of those two. At this moment in time, I'm not getting carried away too much here. I think it could be Glasgow 2023 or Manchester 2023. Before ending this video, I also want to say that I have a new Instagram page, ladies and gentlemen, rajc.uk. You can follow it. There's no posts yet. It is being co-run with a friend of mine. And the idea is that every now and then there will be posts regarding news about the Eurovision Song Contest. Um, we're really hoping to make a good go of it. We're going to be working on it together, slowly but surely. Uh, my friend will be doing more of the design work, but I'll be deciding what goes up there uh, more often than not. Feel free to follow it. I might leave a link in the description in future videos. Um, like I said, there's nothing there yet, but hopefully we'll have a post or two up by the end of the week. Uh, so yes, rajc.uk. Until next time then, let me know your thoughts, really interested to know. Take care of yourselves, stay safe, and I'll be back with another Eurovision-related video in the near future. Take care. Bye for now.